All right, everybody, welcome back to the layout. So this is going to be a the February 2023 20, layout update. And we're over at Cedar Hill. Looks like abandoned uh, roundhouse. Soon that's going to be uh, active again with locomotives and steam engines in there. So um, we're back on the H&H. &H and I'm pleased to announce that construction is going to resume in March. In this section of the layout and basically this is the old Hartford side and what we decided to do was is is to raise this side of the layout a, a whole foot which will bring it level with the other side and basically what I'm going to do is put hidden staging underneath this entire section of the layout so I'm about I'm going to have around 26 feet of hidden staging underneath. And that's gonna be in Maybrook Yard. There's gonna be inbounds and outbounds. Um, I'm not sure how many tracks right, right now, possibly five on each side, I don't know yet. I'm still designing that end of it, but we're gonna raise this entire uh, side of the layout. So I had to start thinking about the track plan I wanted to use and thinking about different types of track plans. I didn't want to over track it. Um, so I looked at the original track plan that was on the H&H on the, uh, on the Hartford side. And I ran through a couple different scenarios and some fictitious obsessions. And I came to the conclusion that this is gonna work out just fine. So what I decided to do was to recreate this track plan I'm going to leave the footprint here. I'm gonna put repairs on those roads and I'm gonna to try to recreate some type of, of the original scene here. It's gonna be a different location. It's gonna be New Haven, not Harford, but I'm gonna to try to reuse some of this original uh, scenery. Like this here, I'm gonna to try to keep this intact the, the best I can. So again, in March, we're gonna start construction. So what I was able to do this weekend, I was able to obtain the original, the original switches that came off the layout. So I took pictures back in 09 of the layout. It's actually, all the pictures are featured in one of my YouTube videos. Um, so, but I took a lot of my pictures and I'm gonna check out the pictures and compare to what switches were where and we're going to try to piece the yard back together. So these are all the switches that were on the layout. There's, there's a lot of switches in here. So I'm going to use my pictures and then also look at the actual cork setup because I can see that there is a three-way switch over here. So, so I'm going to start that process, see how many uh, switches I, uh, I uncover, and uh, we'll be right back. All right, so we're back and I got an update as far as what I'm doing with these switches. So I've been working on laying out all these switches and I'm running into a couple problems, nothing crazy, but um, what I'm gonna end up doing is I had to redesign uh, part of this yard. And the reason why is the yard is only gonna be, or the actual layout is only gonna be two tracks. So I'm gonna have a two track main throughout the layout and I'll show you why. So let's go over here. And this layout was originally designed with uh, a two track main, but I'll show you the track plan and, and how it went. But I'm gonna have a two track main throughout this whole layout. Now this is in the old Harford roundhouse area which I'll explain what I'm gonna turn that into in just a second. Now, if you look at the track plan, this is the old track plan. You have the two track main that went around, went into a, we have a yard here, and here's the station. So if you look at it, it goes through here, and then it breaks up and it goes all over the layout all different areas. So what I'm gonna be doing is, I'm gonna be putting a two track main in throughout the entire layout. However, 
when you look at this section here, I'm gonna try to create the illusion that it's actually four track main like the New Haven had. So when it comes out of the yard here, you can see I have a lot of switches uh, over here. Um, I'm gonna end up having to put in a fifth track. And the reason why is the way these uh, the original track design splits it up, it's not gonna work for my particular application. So I wanna have continuous running uh, on both of these. In order for me to do that, I'm gonna have to change a couple things up. So I'm trying to figure out on this section here how, how to actually modify it. I'm trying different things, but the original track or the original layout had a three-way switch here, and I am not looking to put a three-way switch uh, on a main. I just don't want to do that. So I'm gonna have to change some things up on that. Um, this track here is in the street, and so that's gonna be basically like a siding. So this will be a main, this will be a main, this will be a main, and then I'm gonna have to put another main here, okay? So I'm still trying to figure out this switch, but some of the condition of these switches, um, I'm looking at them, uh, we have gaps cut in, and what I end up doing is I'm gonna replace most of this. Um, I'm using these more of like a, a template anyway. So here's an example, here's a, a long turnout here, and why there's gaps cut, I have no idea. It's probably from the original uh, layout when it was the Huntington and Hartford. So when you go over here, hopefully I'm not confusing anybody just yet. So we're back in the main. It's gonna come in through here. This is still the main, the two mains. This is a siding. This is more, well, actually this, what this is gonna be is the entrance to Cedar Hill Yard. So we're gonna follow the main again, main line, main line. You follow it in. This is gonna be main line and come through here. And then we're at a station stop, okay? So this is gonna be a station platform. That's gonna be New Haven Station. And then these tracks here, one, two, three, and four, that's gonna be my version of Cedar Hill Yard. All right, it's definitely not what Cedar Hill was, but it's gonna work uh, for this layout. So if you look at the actual engine facility, most of it is gonna be intact. I may add a couple different um, sidings in here. I'm having, I haven't figured that part out yet. Uh, but right now I'm trying to figure out what switches I need to order because I'm definitely not going to have enough switches. The roundhouse area. I will be upgrading the roundhouse to a 130 foot roundhouse. I'm going to use that existing uh, roundhouse right there. But I'm, I'm sorry, the turntable is going to be 130 foot. And that's going to be the actual um, roundhouse I plan to use. There will be a diesel facility here. There still will be a caboose track. But um, all this has to be all redone. So right now I got this section pretty much buttoned up as far as what switches I'm going to need. So I'm going to need this switch here, which is a curved left. And then it's going to go into other different switches. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these with Atlas. Atlas makes a large curve turnout. So I'm going to order one of those. And, just, uh, and I believe it's pretty much the same uh, radius. Uh, they're not that much. So I'm going to grab one of those and then over here, I still have to figure out this section here. This is going to be a little bit of a challenge. So I'm still working on that. However, March 11th starts construction. And if you look at, if you're new to this channel, if you go back in a couple of my videos, you'll see how I took this layout down and basically what I'm working with here and I'm going to raise this entire section so this was Hartford now it's going to be New Haven I'm going to raise it a foot I'm going to raise it to the level of the helix here and we're going to do a little layout tour so don't worry 
Um, I'm going to raise this up and I'm going to put hidden staging underneath this entire section. All right. So there's going to be 26 feet of hidden staging. That's going to represent Maybrook. All right. So I'm going to have Maybrook as hidden staging. But right now I'm, I'm designing the hidden staging yard. And basically it's going to be a ladder. So I went to my local hobby shop and I was going to use number six Atlas switches. Uh, and unfortunately, you can't get them. But I found out that the Pico mediums is going to be the way to go. And they're actually less money. The only difference is I'm going to have to take the springs out of these because I'm going to be using tortoise machines. So what's nice about the Pico is they make these templates. And I'm just using this just to lay out my staging yard. I'm going to have an inbound and outbound staging yard. So starting March 11th, construction will begin, and I'm hoping to have it done within a month. So the staging yard should be in within a month. So hopefully by April 1st, and I'm not fooling anybody, April 1st, hopefully I'll have the staging yard in. All right, so let's take a quick break, and when I come back, we're going to do a layout tour, and I'll basically show you everything that I'm doing on this layout. So I'll be right back. All right, so I get questions all the time as far as uh, do I have two layouts or one layout? And um, technically I have two, but they will connect to become one. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you, uh, I give you a layout tour of what I have going on here in the basement. Now again, if you're new to this channel, if you wanna check out my other content, I do have a video of how I move this layout at, from its original location. So uh, let's take a tour and I'll show you exactly what my plans are gonna be. We'll be right back. So you're gonna be looking at my future uh, dispatching station here. And uh, this is the uh, dispatching station from, or dispatching panel from my old layout. And this is what it looked like um, in the old layout. And I've been taking uh, stuff out of this one as you can tell, I got some parts missing. So I'm actually using it for parts right now to build other panels. And eventually I'll be rebuilding this whole and repurposing this whole panel. So if uh, once I'm up and running, this will control the entire layout. And uh, this is going to be our my dispatching station here. Uh, I will have a computer screen, which I'll explain what that's going to be about. And um, again, all the mainline switches will be controlled by the dispatcher. All the yard switches uh, will be controlled by the yard crews and things like that. So as we move along here, this is my uh, Cedar Hill and Cedar Hill engine facility. Again, I'm going to be upgrading the turntable to 130 foot. I do have the actual um, structure that was there. This is actually a lift out. And it's a power plant, so we're going to be using that. I'm not sure what I'm going to put here, but I'm going to try to keep about 95% of the track plan on this side of the layout because I did not want to reinvent the wheel. I wanted to use what was here because the track plan is actually pretty cool. So most of the engine facilities will stay intact. I may um, add a couple tracks here and there, but nothing, nothing major. So I'm going to have engine facilities. I'll have an actual um, railroad car uh, repair facility. I'll have coaling towers. Um, and then I'll have, I'm going to try to put like a dead track in where um, all old equipment will, is just going to sit. So, but as you can tell, the layout is a disaster right now because I'm trying to figure out these switches. So as we move along here, this is the old Hartford, and this will become New Haven. Some of the structures that were on the layout will go back on the layout. So for instance, um, this structure here, I actually purchased this. So this will actually go right back to where it was originally. And uh, track went into it, and that's actually a craftsman kit. I have some of the stuff that goes here. Um, I actually have the structure that goes here, but I don't know if I'm gonna be using it right there or not. Um, this will be Lamberton Street in New Haven. 
This is going to be the other side of New Haven where they did a lot of engine facilities, a lot of engine uh, repairs. Uh, once they closed Reedville station, uh, Reedville shops down, they um, they use Lamberton Street for all the repairs. So this is going to be New Haven, and these tracks eventually, these are actually all original tracks from the layout. Um, these tracks will go up. I'm going to replace all this track, by the way. But these tracks will become elevated, and this side, the other side of the layout will be Bridgeport. I did stretch this side of the layout, so this section here, right over here, is going to be um, New Haven Trap Rock. So I'm going to have a whole quarry in there. And then, again, like I said in the last um, in the last segment of this, I'm going to be raising this whole section, and this whole entire side underneath is going to be all staging. All right, so let's go over to the um, the actual center peninsula, and I'll show you what I'm doing there. All right, so this is the um, the actual track plan, the original track plan for Huntington and Hartford, and this was the center peninsula that was there. Now, obviously, all this has been modified. Um, I had to cut down the center peninsula. Where this layout was, uh, this fit that particular basement but when I brought it here uh, I had to cut this but I had to stretch it here so I had to modify and this is not exactly the easiest thing to do so I'm taking existing bench work and I'm modifying it to fit my track plan and my operating scheme that I want to do so I had to cut this back all right and basically what this is is right here so this is what's left of the center peninsula. And I took 30 inches off the back of it. What this is gonna be is basically split down the middle. This will be elevated. This is not gonna be elevated. Um, I'm gonna be raising this up. This is gonna be up another foot higher. But underneath, I'm gonna have hidden staging under the center peninsula. And I'll show you where the hidden staging will be for in just a second. So this side, this side of the layout here is going to be, um, or this side of the center peninsula is going to be Housatonic Avenue. The other side is going to be Seaview Avenue. Uh, both will probably have some type of street running, and there's going to be a whole bunch of different types of uh, industries in there. Um, so let's head over to the other side, and then I'll show you what I'm planning on doing. So this is going to be the Bridgeport uh, side. Now, you're going to have elevated tracks coming this way and on this side of the elevated tracks we're going to have the lower Bridgeport yard just like I had in the old layout the lower Bridgeport yard was a stub end yard they had you know about a dozen tracks down there but this is going to be a run through section so I'll be able to take uh, a train off the main go into the lower yard and we're going to switch it out from there so if you want to refer back to the track plan this is where we're at now, right here. So this is gonna be Bridgeport. This right here, I bumped this section out and I added a whole section here. This is gonna be Bridgeport Harbor. So I'm gonna have a switching area for the power plant and then uh, I'll definitely have a pier here. So that will be pretty cool. Now, as the layout goes down this way, keep in mind I have the double track main that's coming here on this side and then it's going to be coming through on this side so there's going to be four tracks coming through there'll be three elevated tracks this way and then one on the ground level once it hits the helix over here what i'm going to do at the helix is it's going to come in go up stay elevated come around the helix and then duck under I hope that makes sense to everybody so this is the only way I can do uh, an absolute continuous running all right now underneath this is the original hidden staging uh, this will still be here this is Waterbury yard all right and I'm gonna have probably about three tracks down here it's going to be a smaller yard, but still, it's going to be hidden staging. 
So we're going to come through here. Again, this is going to be Lower Bridgeport Yard. Now we're going to go into East Bridgeport. We're going to have Remington Firearms over here. And again, here's the Helix. Helix is operational, so that's a good thing. It was definitely a pain in the neck to move, but uh, I kind of figured that was going to happen. So I still have quite a bit of work to do on this side. I have to adjust all this. This one had all elevated landforms. So this is the original Waterbury yard plan and the tracks are numbered. So let's talk about, here's the helix here, but let's talk about track 19 and where track 19 is gonna go. So let's go to the other side of the layout. So there's track 19. What I'm gonna end up doing is I'm actually gonna move it over a little bit. I'm gonna move this support and it's gonna come in and I'm gonna have a car float. So the car float is gonna represent Bay Ridge in Brooklyn, all right? Now, I always wanted to use a car float and finally gonna get one. So I ended up picking up this model at one of my local hobby shops. He had it on display there for a while, so I grabbed it and um, this is going to be a small little harbor here. Uh, I'm probably going to end up putting enough room in here to put one of the tugboats in here. So this is going to definitely going to be a car float. Now, this is going to feed the car float. This track here, the switch here, is going to feed the main line that goes through this way. As it comes through this way, we're going to come around it's going to duck into a tunnel and go into staging. Okay. Now let's talk about the staging that uh, we talked about earlier. We're back on the center peninsula underneath here. I'm going to have staging for the car float. I'm probably going to put at least four tracks, four or five tracks underneath here. And I measured out how many feet, I'm going to need based on a full car float. So if you look at the car float, I loaded it up with cars and I measured everything. So I need at least seven feet of hidden staging, seven feet of track to accommodate one full car float. So I'm going to put enough cars under here so I can have four different switches for that car float. All right. So I'm going to have hidden staging under the main section, hidden staging under the center peninsula, and I also have hidden staging for the Waterbury Yard. That's all hidden staging. On the top, I'm gonna to have Cedar Hill Yard and also have the actual Lower Bridgeport Yard. All right, so now let's go look at how we're gonna connect this uh, to the manufacturers. So now you have the actual larger layout to the left. Behind that door is my crew lounge. And then to the right here is my manufacturers. So how I'm going to connect them both, if you look at this track plan, if we're looking at the layout, I'm going to connect both both layouts via lift bridge. So let me grab the lift bridge. We'll be right back. Okay. So I'm sure you've seen this, this layout here before with this piece of track here. This is the, uh, the way the main line is going to access the manufacturers. Now, the way the prototype worked was trains came off the main line at Mill River Junction, which will be part of the layout, and they hit a bridge and they're able to access the manufacturers, which is this here. So once I get this up and running, you're gonna have a lift bridge that connects both layouts. So I can have crews work in the manufacturers here, and I'm gonna have also can have crews work in the main uh, layout. So in essence, I have two layouts, but they really, they connect to become one. So this was a lift bridge that was built for my old layout. This actually was in between a doorway that connected my layout uh, with the uh, other side of it because I went all the way around the, the, uh, the wall with it. But um, I did not want this to go to waste, so I'm reusing it. So this is going to be the bridge that actually is still down in New Haven. And uh, right now the, the P&W switches out the manufacturers. So right now, we're going to go on a really quick tour of what it looks like today down in the manufacturers. So, and I will narrate it as we're traveling through the actual uh, area and my actual layout. 
So what you're looking at is present day Bell Dock, and you see the Q Bridge there on the left hand side. And I believe those are sand hoppers that are brought in. Uh, as we travel down this road, we're looking at the actual Tomlinson lift bridge. And this obviously was replaced from back when, but the trains do uh, travel over this on the left hand side of the bridge, there's a track. Now note the sand towers, or the silos rather, on the right. And as you can tell, my backdrop has those as well. So this is my version of Bell Dock Yard. It's a very small yard, but it definitely adds realism to the layout. Now what you're looking at here is New Haven Terminal. Now this building originally was for Saab motor cars and they would bring in uh, brand new Saabs uh, when they were still making them into this building years ago. Uh, and it was rail served, uh, but not anymore. So, but I did try to model this. I, I will make a uh, billboard for this. And this is my version of New Haven Terminal that's on the layout. This is a Walther's backdrop building. And it's a representation of the New Haven Terminal building that's still standing today. And this does hold three cars uh, when you're switching it out. And as you can tell, this is the other part of the layout. This is my version of the Tomlinson lift bridge. Now this bridge is just a piece of wood that I will make it to look like a lift bridge, but it will not lift. But it just adds realism. And you see the New Haven gas on the left. All right, so now we're back on the uh, manufacturers, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time because I have so many videos on this uh, this part of this layout. Um, but I'm going to show you uh, a map that make uh, that may make more sense to you. So, if you look at this map, now this is back when this right here is the main line. All right, this is you can see it's a four track main. So this is the New Haven main. And you can see that it comes off of here. And then off the map, it comes off of here. So years ago, the New Haven used to access this area from two areas, from two sections of the uh, main. This right here is the Bell Dock Branch. So when you travel down the Bell Dock Branch, in the video, this is where we saw uh, the yard of all the, uh, the cars those hoppers and then this was the original bell dock area so you saw bell dock is still used today and then we went over to Tomlinson uh, lift bridge and then we went in we went down this way and I showed you a picture of the New Haven terminal building now the New Haven terminal building did get switched out just as you see here okay so this side, so you have Bell Dock Branch. This right here is the manufacturers, all right? So if you look at all the different areas uh, that the New Haven switched out, and look at the, how tight those radiuses were. You have the Bigelow um, Boiler Company. We have River Street here. River Street was street running. These are all the different areas that were switched out. Okay, so let's go over to the other side and I'll show you uh, this area on the layout. So now we're on River Street. There's Bigelow Boiler, Quinni uh, Quinnipiac Brewing. And we also have DuPont, right? Now this area here is going to be changing very soon as far as I'm going to be putting a building there. And I'll talk about that at probably at my next layout update. But this is River Street. You have New Haven Gas. They used to have ships come in and they used to make the gas here at the New Haven Gas Plant and then ship it out. Now, there's New Haven Gas right here. Mill River. 
This is Mill River. This is going to be a harbor section. This is the Quinnipiac. And then we also have New Haven Harbor. So if you look at the track arrangement, the track closest to the backdrop is the Bell Dock Branch. And the track closest to, uh, actually this track right here, that's the manufacturers. Now the manufacturers stops at New Haven Gas. Now geographically, it's incorrect, but it's what I had to work with. You got to remember that uh, the manufacturers, this layout here, was built from surviving sections of my old layout. I added new spots and I designed this layout without knowing that I was actually going to buy the Huntington and Hartford. So, again, some of these places actually existed on the uh, manufacturers, the Pittsburgh Plate Glass, New Haven Wood Company. New Haven Coal. So I try to create a, an atmosphere that um, was realistic. This track arrangement is almost prototypical. If, if I had the layout come out here, this will be Chapel Street in New Haven. So there's a lot of uh, different things that uh, the A&P warehouse. So there's a lot of different businesses that actually existed that I put on here. So back in its day, the manufacturers had about 45 industries that were rail served. Out of the 45, I put 14 on this layout. Now this layout was only 14 feet long and I have 14 industries to switch out, okay? So it's definitely a lot of fun and can be challenging at times, but it was definitely a lot of fun to design and I still got a lot of work to do. But the bottom line is this layout is operational. I can operate anytime I want and now I'm gonna take my time and do the scenery. But I still have to get the, um, the other layout up and running. So let's head back over to the uh, New Haven, the bigger New Haven layout, and then we'll wrap up this update. So another one of my resources that I'm using is the uh, mechanical department facilities maps. Now, this has so much great information in there about the New Haven and all the shops that it had. Uh, all the different yards like New Rochelle and uh, Port Chester. Here's Maybrook. Obviously, my Maybrook is not going to be anywhere near this. Um, there's Danbury. Okay. So here's New Haven. Okay. So one of the things that I'm doing. Here's Lamberton Street. Now, Lamberton Street actually had a turntable way back when, you can see there. But this is obviously New Haven, Har New Haven Harbor here. If everyone remembers the powerhouse that was there. And this is Lamberton Street. So Lamberton Street was probably one of the main um, engine facilities that the New Haven had at one time. All right. Here's another view of it. It's a lot of, a lot of cool uh, aerial photos. Now, some of the things that I'm using, um, there's the central heating plant that I showed you earlier. I'm gonna have something, a building representing that. And there, there's, I mean, they had a maintenance away blacksmith shop. So, if you want to make it 100% prototypical, this is definitely the book. Uh, but I'm using this as a guide to uh, guide me through. And um, you have your Lamberton Street um, engine facilities. And you can see the actual turntable that was there at one point. So then we continue on. Here's uh, Waterbury. Waterbury Yard I'll have there. On, uh, that'll be hidden staging. You have low, the lower Bridgeport yard. I'm sorry, this is East Bridgeport. And then you have the lower yard here. So you can tell it only had a few tracks. It didn't have a lot. And there's Bridgeport Harbor here. So this is the corner of the layout that I showed you earlier. It's gonna come off the main. There's the main line right there. And 
it had a small yard. So I'm probably going to put a few tracks in there anyway. Okay. And then finally, we have Cedar Hill, which I don't have room for Cedar Hill. So my, my version of Cedar Hill will be four tracks. So, but that's all right. It works. But I'll show you a cool picture. This was Cedar Hill way back when. Two, two roundhouses, two turntables. I mean, just a massive facility. So this, the coal tower, believe it or not, still standing. So I'm going to, I picked up the, uh, a Walters building, the, uh, their larger coal tower. And, uh, that's what I'm going to use to simulate that. Now, if you look at, you have your coal tower here, and then you have, you have your, um, sand towers, and then you have the turntable. So if you take a look at the layout. This is where my uh, coal tower will be. Put my sanding towers here, turntable, roundhouse. So that's why this layout that I purchased is gonna work perfectly. And I'll be able to take it and transform it from Hartford to New Haven pretty easily. So but I mean the size of Cedar Hill it's nothing like it is now but the size of Cedar Hill is just amazing that's Cedar Hill I mean that's incredible I would need like a warehouse to uh, model that but anyway so this is going to wrap up uh, this layout tour and again these, these books are pretty pretty good it shows everything here but anyway i hope you enjoyed the uh the layout tour what my plans are going to be but um i know this video is going to be a tad bit late but i hope you enjoy this video now uh i'm going to be having some probably a couple extra layout update videos uh based upon um my progress on the construction but the plan is to have it done uh, for the month of March, and I should have this uh, hidden stage and working pretty, pretty, uh, pretty soon. My plan is to have trains running by the end of summer. I don't know how far I'll get, but I'm going to try really hard. But I have to get the hidden staging in in Mar next month without fail. So that's going to push me to get a lot of stuff done. So uh, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Rod New Haven Rails. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. I normally respond to every comment that you guys put out. And uh, thank you for your support. I'm approaching 3,500 subscribers. I never dreamed this ch channel would actually get that far. But I am appreciative. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Check out the rest of my content. So this is Rod New Haven Rails. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you at the next layout update.